So I'm standing uh, kind of in front and a little uh, back from what I have affectionately called Graham's Garden um, reestablished 2024 because years and years ago this was the site of her garden. Uh, she grew vegetables and flowers and uh, lots of dill and um, she had gotten to the point where she just couldn't manage a big garden anymore so it kind of got smaller and smaller and then it turned into a raised bed and then she ultimately just she couldn't tend to a garden any longer so it all turned into lawn and um, I had requested a space in the spring um, somewhere where I can plant a variety of you know vegetables flowers whatever really and just experiment with the soil amendments that I'm generating here. So the frass, uh, the compost, a combination of the two, because I think it's important to know what you're selling, how, know how it works, how it affects plants, how it affects uh, the soil health, all that stuff. So I have requested this space and uh, my uncle tilled up and um, kind of reestablished Graham's garden. So I think this has been just a perfect homage. Uh, we lost her last November, and um, so this is this is the space now. This is what I've done to it, and I just I love it so much. I I hope um, this is something that she can look down on and just be proud and grateful and just happy to see it back to life. So on that note, um, I'll give you a little tour. So first we have to uh, appease the little bridge troll here, that's Mona, and we come across the bridge, but I'll show you here. It's a variety of stuff. Um, years ago I thought I would be a flower farmer and I kind of went crazy buying seeds. Uh, it didn't pan out. <laughs> I just had seeds for a long time. and. I wasn't really sure what would actually germinate. So this was a huge experiment on several, level, on several levels. Um, so I'll go down the line here. And this was all planted like the first couple days of June. And uh, so here the marigolds, two rows of marigolds and celosia were starts that I got in six packs. And they did pretty good. Um, they just kind of stayed low and shrubby, which is fine. My zinnias were direct seeded from seeds that um, I saved from my garden last year. And there is a hummingbird back there right now. And the hummingbirds just love, love the zinnias here, which has been a delight. Um, pokeweed, but you know, birds like to eat the berries, so I'll leave that there. Uh, Something that I didn't realize would be a huge issue was groundhogs. Um, this was my first time experiencing groundhog damage. And this row, it's actually nitro radishes right now. I had to plant something because the groundhog ate almost everything. Every parsley plant that I had, every marigold that started to like sprout, the groundhog just sat here and ate delicious parsley salad. So I got rid of that. Um, doesn't seem to like radishes though. So there's that. Uh, so I experimented with interplanting. So seeds, marigold here I have planted and it's a type of jewel corn I just found in a bucket. So I thought I'd try germinating it and it's sprouted obviously. What happened though, um, I thought the marigolds would keep the deer away and would give the corn a good chance. Um, and it kind of worked except the groundhog really liked this variety of marigolds for some reason. Um, it's a, it's a giant marigold. They get real tall. This one's real tall. It's, although that's not even the tallest one. Hi, Grizzy. So this one's probably three and a half feet tall. Um, so the 
groundhog would eat these. And then at, in one section, the deer came through and just started nibbling down uh, to where the groundhog nibbled down. So they were kind of in cahoots, if you will. Um, interspecies collusion. Go figure. And this is where some corn got knocked down. We had six inches of rain in one day and just, just got decimated. So I took that out. Um, and then here with sunflowers, we have planted with more giant marigolds. And again, the marigolds were supposed to keep the deer away. Um, groundhog ate the marigolds. The deer ate sunflowers, not all of them, but it was enough to prove their point. Like we see you, Aubrey, and we don't care. So point taken. Um, finches have been going after the sunflower seeds like crazy. This patch is a little bit weedy, but I haven't been worried about re weeds so much. I just haven't had the time. Um, but I had half of my tomatoes get blighted. Theoretically, there shouldn't have been a blight in the soil because it had been so long if tomatoes had ever been in this section, but, um, there was no mistaking a blight and I just ripped those plants out. So I have maybe a third of the tomato plants, which is fine. I didn't really need to process all those tomatoes this fall because I got enough Oh, there's a hummingbird. There it is. Oh, it's so majestic. Oh, there it goes. Okay, and more zinnias interplanted with another corn. This is another jewel corn. I think down there was red. And this is a like a blue mix color. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but um, this one's got three ears. And this one is trying its hardest. So something interesting here with the corn. Um, everything in this whole patch, like this whole garden, I should say, was uh, planted with compost because the soil was not real healthy looking. So I did give everything a little bit of compost right off the bat. And um, I'll see if I can demonstrate the difference here. So that corn, that end here was fine. And then this end up here was hit kind of hard by deer. And maybe like um, when the, when the uh, corn was about maybe not even three feet tall, this section here, the deer just like munched down. So I thought, well, let's, let's try something. Um, and they had also, they kind of went down this whole row really. And so this top half I applied frass to, this bottom half I didn't. And even now you can see this side looks greener than this side. I don't know if that's due to the frass, but I, I did notice that this section here rebounded from the deer damage so much faster and within a couple weeks you you really couldn't tell that it, it lost uh lost any like traction um oh, i wish i could I, there's a hummingbird up there yep there it is <laughs> um so that was a really interesting and promising little experiment i have no idea what that yield is going to be like kind of the next step here harvesting and then kind of weighing what what comes out of that it's really regular obviously <laughs> like they got some real tall ones we got some short ones um some are spindly some are like nice and robust ears but uh, i don't know we'll see um i obviously wasn't like real particular with my spacing i just kind of dropped seed um I was trying to get a lot into this one space before the rain was going to come and like water everything in. So I was hustling. 
but you can see the celosia over there. That was all direct seeded. Basically everything here was direct seeded. The sunflowers, they're past their prime, but they were really pretty about a week and a half ago. Cosmos did amazing. Um, they're like seven feet tall. I didn't know Cosmos would get seven feet tall, but they did. Uh, this is an amazing pink buckwheat. And I need to grow this forever and ever because it's, it is such a wonderful cut flower. It works great as a filler flower. And also the foliage stays really nicely. So you can use it as a green, you can use it as a filler flower. And it lasts really nicely in a vase. I was pleasantly surprised. And it's been blooming like mad. Uh, I don't think it stopped blooming in like, geez, six weeks. It's just ever, ever blooming. And these teeny tiny little bugs are after it. So this row I ripped out because, oh gosh, I forget what was here. Um, I think it was a Chinese spinach and the potato beetles. It's a type of amaranth. So I think that's why um, the beetles that get after like this amaranth, uh, they just decimated these. And even though like you could see how these were huge stalks. Um, but after a while they just they can't withstand the damage so i just ripped everything out uh, and then i have planted these are little baby kale plants and i think over here some arugula should be coming up and our little bridge troll is back hi mona she got sprayed by a skunk and this is super super stinky <laughs> And then I have Mexican sunflowers here, which also the hummingbirds love. Um, just like a perfect little flower and really amazing foliage. Really interesting. Like, that's just such a cool pattern. And with the dappled light, I ah, love it. And amaranth here is all going to seed and I kind of went a little bananas with the amaranth. Like this is only part of it. And the heads are getting so heavy because they're all going to seed. Um, but yeah, so this is uh, something Verde. The orange is called Hot Biscuits. And that one is, it's gotta be like 10 feet tall. And this red stuff, it just looks so great. So I did some more interplanting here. The amaranth down here had calendula planted with it. Calendula did not do well because it likes a little bit more sun. However, the zinnias interplanted with amaranth, that did great. Um, like these are so tall, it's probably about four feet tall. So nice long stems. I think the zinnias deterred the deer from eating the amaranth down too far. Um, I mean, in the back there, you can kind of see where the deer just kind of kept nibbling and nibbling and the zinnias kept growing up. But I did try to plant the sacrificial am amaranth and it worked. But not completely and that's all right just the contrast of colors too i it, it's so hard to capture but the vibrant green with like the purpley opal um like opal basil it's like the same same shade And here you can kind of see the, the crescendo of size. So from kind of a lower end, these are probably four to five feet tall and it just gets taller and taller and taller. 
I love it. I have some pansies coming up. I don't know where that came from. This was just like a, uh, I have old seed. Let's see what germinates patch. So the radishes were still good, obviously. So I, I'm going to keep using those. That might be a crop, cover crop for this winter. I'm not sure. Sudan grass, I planted a whole row and we got two. Two of them. But whatever. Some larkspur came up. Uh, there's some euphorbia. That's the white variegated flower here, which is such a cool plant. And I have some seed I gotta collect there. I'm gonna collect that seed. Maybe there's nothing here to collect. Mmm, bummer. And that's something. Nigella, maybe? I gotta look at my notes. I think it's Nigella. I gotta check my notes. Like, look at the vibrancy. Ah, oh, it's so perfect. I haven't seen too many monarchs this year. I did see a monarch out at the zinnias mm, last week. It's been kind of a eye-opening year as far as the lack of monarch uh, density. And then back here was, hmm, I tried to turn this into a, oh, there's a pumpkin gourd that it looks like a groundhog got to. Thanks, buddy. Really appreciate that. Um, so I'm, I was growing birdhouse gourds in here. I don't have that many, uh, but I used just plain buckwheat as a cover crop. It's kind of messy, kind of weedy. Um, <laughs> that was right kind of chaos approach this year. Um, back here we have elderberries, which kind of just fed the birds. The birds were really happy to eat the elderberries. And the gourd is climbing the elderberry, you can see. And there's some echinacea in there. There's a uh, mountain mint growing there. Some rudbeckia too. Hyssop, rue. Uh, a couple pawpaw trees back there. They will not fruit for probably five more years. <laughs> and I threw some amaranth in because I had so much amaranth seed. I just, just did it. The birds are really going after the amaranth flower heads now too. So birds are super happy. The bees are all over the the variety of flowers. The hummingbirds are out here. Um, <laughs> the cats are eating cats. Uh, and here's and here's another birdhouse gourd. It's a different variety this year, I think. I don't know if I like these, but oh well. Um, and Papa. Looks like a tomato plant came up in there. And there are black walnuts all over the place. I'm trying to keep ahead of them, but we have trees all over. So there's my little tour of Graham's garden. Um, I need to make a little sign for it yet because I think that would be kind of like the perfect little touch to have Graham's garden reestablished 2024. So um, I'm very excited about what I grew here this year. I'm, 
I really like this. I like picking the flowers and having them either for myself or giving them to someone. Um, I already know what I want to grow next year. I know what seeds I need to start collecting and um, I need to figure out some groundhog plans because man that's annoying but um, yeah this has been a really really nice place just kind of an oasis um, just standing in the garden and the the hummingbird is just kind of like buzzing by your ears it's, it's kind of magical um, and we've had orioles and bluebirds and uh, some wood thrush, all types of bugs out here that the birds are after. And um, it's just nice. It's really nice. It's it's nice to be here and the nature is just like, yeah, you're cool. We'll, we'll fly around you. Whatever. So anyway, uh, there's the tour. Um, hopefully next year it's better bigger i don't know i don't know but anyway um thanks for watching and keep it circular